we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, like a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. So good to be with you this morning. Would you let others know right now, because we are wanting to post this so we can have many to join with us today uh, around the world. So we welcome all the e-campus. We welcome even the ones locally here from the congregation that are able to join with us online. Thank you all for what you're doing, joining with us during this time of the year of Thanksgiving. We are definitely experiencing many blessings and thanking the Lord. We were able this past week to over 500 uh, that we were able to minister to through boxes of food with actual the, the turkeys of the Thanksgiving meal given in that same uh, box. And, and we're, we're praising the Lord for so many uh, of lives that we are able to join together and I believe with all of my heart making a difference. I want to take you to the word of the Lord for the next few moments. And I want to direct your attention. Uh, I heard a statement uh, the other day. We were lining things up and that ones were talking about, well, you've got to make an appointment for that. They will not see you or you cannot just walk in. Some places you actually could go by and they'll say no appointment needed or no appointment necessary. But during this time of the virus and many restrictions that's been put, many places have gone into where they have to set up <clears throat> appointments. Well, when that phrase come across, no appointment needed or no appointment necessary, Scripture just seemed like the Holy Spirit started touching my heart. And I began to hear the word of the Lord just really through Scripture fulfilling, no appointment is needed with me. No appointment is necessary with me. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to go through that process. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord hears us as we reach out to Him. Isn't that amazing? to realize that we can call upon the Lord really from that direction and that perspective. What I want to do right now is direct us to the Scripture. In John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6, I want to start reading there. Would you get your Bible and open it to there with me? And that way you can just have your word. I know many times we'll put it on the screen and you can see it that way. And I don't mind all of that. I think all of that's wonderful to be able to have at our fingertips. But I think sometimes having it so easily accessible, sometimes it, it makes it better if we can physically or even on your phone or your iPad or if you're at your computer and you have the program there, you can open up the scripture on it. That's perfectly fine. But just join with us this way in making a difference as we can invest the Word of the Lord. And if you turn in your Bible, you will see how easily to locate the Scriptures and where they are so you can follow along. So again, we direct our attention to John 14, verse 1, we begin with. And it says, Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. Now, when I think of the title of this message, the next statement in this verse really lines up. When I think of that, no appointment needed or no appointment necessary, he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Let's just stop there. If you have time, you can read on through verse 6. But I just wanted you to see where really the Lord said in His preparation for us that He is preparing a place for us. And that He said, where I go, He said, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to Myself. In other words, we're not waiting in line. In other words, we're not having to have an appointment now, I understand we say through the Word, you know, there's an appointed time for every one of us. Well, but we don't know when that is. All we know today is that we have gotten up. We're going through the day. We're here in the presence together of the Lord in worship today to lift His name. But we don't know what even today holds, much less tomorrow as we continue to go forward with the steps ahead of us. But what is the day in which we live? It is a day of uncertainty. I believe we could answer that question of what the day in which we live is. It, it's a day of uncertainty. We can say, well, there's one thing that's certain, and that is that Jesus is Lord. You may think that there's a lot of certain things in your life. You may get up this morning and go out to your automobile certain it's going to start. But then you may find out several different things may happen that hinder it, hinders that start. Such as the battery's dead. Such as the starter won't give what you need. It is now malfunctioning. Or you may have a flat tire so on and so forth, many different things can just unexpectedly mess up what you thought. And most of the time, because we're so certain, we are expecting everything to fall in place so easily, we really don't give ourselves time for those other things that could possibly happen. We come out just enough time that we can get in our automobile and rushing to grab a coffee or to get to work on time and so on with our thought process of our plans. And we just don't expect those other things to interfere with our day. Well, what it seems in our life of those uncertainties, there was a, a lady by the name of Naomi. There was also in that family where her husband, they had two sons, her and her husband did, and they moved to a place of Moab because a famine was in the land. When they moved with their sons there, their sons met two ladies of the land, and they married them. And there, as they were going forward in life, everything seemed to be going well, then death happened. Life of uncertainty happened, if you please, because Naomi's husband died, and then it says her two sons died, which left her now with two daughter-in-laws. Well, we know if you're familiar with this story from the Bible, you know that I'm talking about the story out of the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. And the two daughter-in-laws, of course, one of them is by the name of the book, Ruth. Then the other was Orpah. These two daughter-in-laws, we understand that they were there along with Naomi. And the time came, and this is where I want to pick up reading in Ruth chapter 1, beginning with verse 6. Because the day came that Naomi had received some news. Let's find out what it is. 
In Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Then she arose with her daughters and her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Now, do you know that Naomi lived with her husband in the, the place of Bethlehem? Bethlehem, defined of that name, is the house of bread. Isn't it interesting that the house of bread had reached a place when they were living there before moving from there, and what caused them to move from there, as I said earlier, was the famine. In other words, the house of bread became empty. That's a very sad picture, isn't it? That the house of bread, the place that was known of really of plenty, of satisfaction, or the place named of for provision, in other words, of bread, and it now had a famine. It now could not supply the provision it was named after. And so they moved from there, and while there, now she has heard, even though all these other things of the deaths had happened, she had heard that the Lord, did you catch that? The Lord had visited back in Bethlehem, and there they had bread. Can I tell you what may have stopped, what may have lacked, excuse me, <coughs> what may have lacked has now become provided for or refilled? Mm, think about that. What was empty? If you this morning are empty, the Lord is here today to let you know He can refill, He can restore, He can revive. And so here Naomi is looking to return into the country, it said there, of Bethlehem, because the Lord had visited His people by giving them bread. But then the story continues as she prepares to return. Verse 7, Therefore she went out from the place where she was and her two daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But as they were starting the journey, listen to what Naomi said in verse 8 to her two daughter-in-laws. She said, Go, return each to her mother's house, the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with a dad and with me. In other words, they were still showing their faithfulness to their mother-in-law. And then it says, The Lord grant that you may find rest in, in each and the house of her husband. So she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. No doubt. You know, I've heard a lot of stories about in-laws. And how one just seem like they can't get along in those areas. But this is an interesting place because Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws were getting along so well that when she told them to go back home, they lifted up their voices and wept. It's not that they didn't desire or was willing, it seemed, to return home. But there was such a connection or a bond or a family and then it said, and they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. In other words, we're going to stay with you. Both of them had said that at that moment. But then Naomi replied, verse 11, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that, you may, that may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should say I have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they were, were grown? Would you rest, restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters. For it grieves me very much for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Think of this. Then they lifted up their voices and wept. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. 
And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Well, we get to this point of seeing what the journey was happening in the life of Naomi. She was getting ready to head home, back to her land, even what she said to her people. Now as her daughter-in-law, Orpah, returned, my Lord, what a story in this thing. As she went back, not only to her people, but to her gods. Now there is a message in this, because as she went back, when the Lord said there's no other gods before him, she went back to a place really where it seemed that there was no future. Just going on with life as it were. But Ruth, the other daughter-in-law, stayed with Naomi, clung to her, in other words, the scripture says. And when it said, Ruth spoke such a word. It really has become almost where we like to memorize it so we can quote it, but I just want you to hear it this morning again because she said, entreat me. This is Ruth saying to her mother-in-law, entreat me not to leave you. Don't force me to do that. Now, when I begin to think about this message, no appointment needed, no appointment necessary. It really begins to speak to me. In other words, I want to stay with you. We've already made a choice. This isn't just going back to some other thing that is set up. She said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. From wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if anything but death parts you and me. Wow. That is a commitment. That is a faithfulness. Think about it. God honored when this communication had ceased because it says in verse 18, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. And now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem, and all the city was excited because of them, and the women said, Is this Naomi? As they began to enter the city, Ruth remained with her mother-in-law. But what she had committed to was that not just only the lodging where she would live, she would, she would live with her, but she had said, And your God will be my God. I need us to see this morning that what Ruth was able to take on and entrust in herself and remaining faithful to Naomi is that it was not required any other provision that she needed to do except just to stay committed and stay faithful, stay dedicated. And I believe this morning what the Lord is wanting to get across in this message to us through this fresh word today, as we are together in the word, as I've been calling this time together, is that we understand that the Lord today is wanting to reach out to you and to me and that he's just expecting us to remain faithful, to remain committed, to remain dedicated, to remain surrendered to him. And I believe one of the most important words that I haven't said as of yet is to be obedient. Obedient. To be able to know that whatever... Because Ruth had made herself obedient to her mother-in-law. In In other words, she said to her, The Lord do so to me, and more also, this is back in verse 17, If anything but death parts you and me. In other words, I'll be obedient to anything through that faithfulness. I'm going to follow it to, as we use a phrase at times today, to a T. 
But as they entered in, Naomi tried to explain to those as she was walking into the city. And those ones that saw her from the city, the other people that remembered her before she had left that known her, she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me, and I went out full. And the Lord has brought me home again empty. Think about it. Even though the place that they were at in Bethlehem had become empty, she said, but we left full. In other words, before they lost everything, they left and went to the land of Moab. But she said, I have come back empty. Think about it with me. And at that point, I need us to see today that really she was not as empty as she thought she was. Really the Lord that she was going to continue to seek that Ruth come in contact, understanding by living by that faithfulness and by living by that commitment and living by that obedience that we understand this morning that God truly began to work through the life of Ruth. How do I know? I'll tell you how I know because in the New Testament, uh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 5, do you know that into this, the Bible tells from verse 1 that you can read up through the, in, the, in the Scripture, you can actually find that there's 42 generations of Abraham unto Jesus Christ. Think about it. There's 42 generations in the first chapter of Matthew of the New Testament. And it says in verse 5 of that chapter 1, and it's actually to the 12th generation of that 42 generations listed there. In the 12th generation from Abraham, it says in verse 5, Salmon begat Boaz by Rahab, but then it says Boaz begat Obed by Ruth. Do you know that Ruth, who was from the land of Moab, she was not even one except grafted in, and you please, through Naomi, from into Bethlehem, she served other gods till she came into the fa land and, and to the family, I should say, of Naomi. And she served the true and living God through her commitment and obedience to Naomi to the point that she became the 12th generation in the lineage of unto Jesus Christ's birth. <laughs> when you begin to connect those things, her faithfulness to Naomi proved to be a blessing that God engrafted, if you please, in the lineage. In other words, because of her faithfulness of obedience to Naomi, God honored that in the lineage. Wow. Can I tell you, God today is honoring your obedience right now? You may say, well, how have I been obeying him? Right now, just by you and myself connecting and you opening up your heart and you being receptive to the Lord and saying, Lord, your will be done in my life and Lord, I'm surrendering my life to you. You are connecting and making that release into obedience today. That is amazing to me. That is why there was no appointment necessary. There was, there was no area in that place except her. She didn't know she was becoming in a lineage of a prophetically word fulfilled through Jesus Christ coming generations later. She didn't know she was part of that journey. She just knew she was going to be committed to what she had become included in and knew that it was something she did not need to let go of. I'm trying to tell you this morning, you don't need to let go of Jesus. You may not know what down the road and how God will bless in your life 
into your family's life, into generations, Lord willing to come. My, 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 what a message this morning, at least for me and I believe for many of you today. That the Lord is wanting you to know that He has things in line and in order and He blesses that obedience right now that you're willing to step. Her blessing of Ruth started when she just said, entreat me not to leave you. Let me stay with you. Don't force me to go. Let me remain faithful and obedient. And Ruth remained that in that direction and God blessed and she without even knowing was in the lineage of the prophetic fulfillment. So what Jesus is for me and you today to fulfill? Let's look at John 15 for just a moment. John chapter 15, beginning with verse 1, Jesus said, because if Ruth was engrafted, if you please, in that lineage of Jesus, now Jesus has come, we'll step into this next month. Many people highlighting the birth, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ through what we call the Christmas season. But Jesus came and he fulfilled what had been prophetically told for him to do by being born, by growing into manhood, but being a lamb for you and me that would be slain or crucified on the cross. And he died and was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose again. And he lives forevermore. But Jesus said, while he was on this earth and put in the word of the Lord, really as he spoke it, but just in that voice of fulfillment, verse 1, I am the true vine, he said. And my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. But then he said, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. I believe today the Lord is pruning us. <laughs> His word is ever so true. But he prunes it. He said that it may bear more fruit. That's the reason why we need to let him love us or chastise us. Because he said he chastises those whom he loves. He went on in verse 3 to say, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Then he said, abide in me. Isn't that what Ruth said to Naomi? Let me abide in you. Let me move. Let me live. Let me die with you. Let me be there. Let me abide with you. Abide in me, he said in verse 4. And I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Because he reminds us again in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. What a word today. I want you to know that in him we can accomplish and bear much fruit. So that's how easy this walk with the Lord is. It is not that difficult. It's just to be obedient. It's to love him like Ruth loved Naomi. It's to be able to say to our Heavenly Father, I know that you're here, Lord. And I know right now, as Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you. Lord, I know you're not going to push me away. In other words, we can say. Or to turn back from following after you. The Lord said, we even highlighted it this past Wednesday evening of this previous service that we preached for 7 p.m. Go back online and pull that up if you haven't had the opportunity and hear that message from this Wednesday evening. Here he said, for, she said, for wherever you go, I will go. In other words, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm sort of putting Naomi in the place of our relationship with the Lord that we are putting it in perspective because really as Ruth followed Naomi, Naomi was following her God. So Ruth began to follow God in her walk 
not just Naomi's God any longer. Ruth took on everything that it seemed that Naomi was involved with with her life. It became Ruth's journey. So everything that the Lord has, he's wanting to say, I can produce it to you. As he said that he is the vine and that we are the branches. And by us being in him, we can produce much fruit. Because he said, without me, you can do nothing. Isn't that what he said in John 15 that we just read? But let me go back to this place of Ruth. Because she began to say, and wherever you go, I will go. Isn't that following after God, correct? And then she said, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Well, that's where we almost started the scripture. That though Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Well, wherever you lodge, I will lodge. We recognize that we are just a pilgrim on this earth. Like Abraham said, I'm just passing through. This, is, this world is not my home. There are a lot of people today that's trying to say in Christianity that we need to build our kingdom here. No. Jesus himself said this kingdom is not of this world that he has. He said it. I didn't. That's his word. We need to recognize, stop trying to build your kingdom on this earth for the Lord and recognize that he said that we are able to to prepare the treasure of our heart is not to be here, it's to be with Him. And to understand that is how we can be most effective on this earth. That everything we are doing and accomplishing is to bring glory to the Lord. And that we are focused to Him because we are following after Him. And then it said, Ruth did to Naomi, and we speak it in in essence, to our Heavenly Father, wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And then your people shall be my people. So now that's where we are. While we are following after the Lord, while we know heaven is our home, while we know that while we are here, as she said, your people shall be my people, that is so we can know that His people are our people, or we can be able to reach hearts and lives for Him, and your God, my God, so we can make a difference for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then where you die, I will die. In other words, I will fulfill every step of the way. <laughs> what a word this morning. Amen. Oh, to you be the glory, Father. To you be all the praise. I bring it to you today, Lord. Hallelujah, let's just lift him up a moment. Father, this is not my will, but it's your will. This is not my way, but your way. Pray this with me right now, would you? Because I believe the Lord is here in our heart. I believe he's here in this prayer today. Lord, use us for your honor and your glory. Lord, forgive me. Lord, let me right now be like Isaiah was. When he said, for I am a man of unclean lips, I am undone, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Lord, right now, just cleanse us like what you did through the seraphim of going to that altar and receiving that live coal and bringing it and touching Isaiah's lips and saying, your iniquity is taken away. You have been cleansed. So, Lord, today we come to you now believing that many have been purified and cleansed, separated and sanctified right now. And Lord, let them be filled with the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let them be able, Father, to be filled with, a, with your anointing, God, to where they can be able to be able to impact this world. For Lord, we give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you, Jesus that we know that there will be many praise reports forthcoming. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to say quickly to the moderators, thank you. I want to 
Thank them because they be an online. And would you right now, if you haven't already communicated with us, if you're live with us during this 830 hour, would you this moment just let them know and just touch base what the Lord is doing in your life? Or if there is a prayer request, pass that on to us. We want to be able to lift you up in prayer today and to let you know that there is the Lord Jesus Christ that is going to touch and make a way and going to direct. So be blessed today and be strengthened today and understand that as we continue to go forward, would you right now join with me and let's give unto the Lord through the tithes, through the offering. Don't forget even through extra and above that we can continue to impact the harvest. I just believe that we recognize that the Lord is here to do the work. And as we open up our heart, I believe there is a reason to make a difference today in the lives of many, many, many people. And I believe we don't need to slow down. I don't believe we need to turn it into lack. I believe we need to turn it into overflow to where we can know that the Lord is truly, truly allowing hearts and lives to be touched as we are proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you as you join with us. EastonCOG.org if you need to know how to get online again from that direction. And go there and just join with us and just partner with us because we thank you. Thank you for so many of you that have already been doing that. And we just welcome you to continue to join along with us today. May the Lord bless you is our prayer. God bless you today till we meet again.